Oh, 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 boy, would you look at that. Yeah, I'm going to do it again, guys. A uh, mailman came a few days ago, brought me a knife from Titusville, Pennsylvania. I got giddy as a schoolgirl. Been carrying it around for a few days now. Still giddy as a schoolgirl. I got to tell you about it. Stick around, my friends. This is going to be good. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 29 July 2014. I think this is like my third video of the night. I've got to get some in the can because I'm going to be out of commission for about the next week, working about 12, 13 hours a day on the hot black top of the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, selling cars under a tent. It's just dirty, nasty fun capitalism for a week and that's all I'm going to do is sleep and sell cars so, uh, not to deprive you of content on the eve of moving the cars I'm knocking out some videos and I will sprinkle them in over the next week so and because this is my third one I'm getting a little dry my lips are starting to get tangled up with each other so it's time to apply another coating of love balm by the fresh pea so talk amongst yourselves mm -hmm. got it okay ready to go some of you may remember a few months ago I did a review of or initial impression video of the number 15 Tom's Choice Barlow by Great Eastern Cutlery that knife was a guest blade donated for the camera by my subscriber Jorge, George, spells it Jorge, says it George. And that particular Tom's Choice Barlow was in Gabon Ebony covers and had a spear point blade. And frankly, uh, I was never very interested in the Tom's Choice Barlow before that video and really didn't know what all the fuss was about. I got to spend a couple days with George's knife and I understood. <laughs> it is made on the number 15 chassis by Great Eastern Cutlery. That is the boys knife chassis. So it's kind of a shorter knife. Uh, at the time a little smaller than I thought I wanted to carry boy was I wrong and guys please go back and reference that video for more detail uh, on the knife and more history of the Barlow that I'm going to give you in this video but suffice it to say that I was enamored with George's knife and I wanted a Tom's Choice Barlow of my very own and I started to look and I found out something rather alarming uh, Tom's Choice Barlows are the brainchild of one Charlie Campagna, who I guess he's not really a dealer. He's sort of a uh, a wholesaler. He makes these special factory orders out of his mind's eye with Great Eastern Cutlery, and he has them placed with our favorite online retailers as they're being built. Not sure how the finances of all that work, but let's let's acknowledge one thing. Mr. Campagna knows what a beautiful and functional pocket knife ought to look like, and this is one of them. Uh, the let's see, what other ones have I looked at on this channel? The Diamond Jack, the number 48 Diamond Jack, is a Charlie Campagna special factory order. And it seems like there's been another one. Can't recall right off the top of my head. But anyway, uh, I saw on Great Eastern Cutlery's website that these were in production or about to be in production. And I was frantic. I couldn't find any indication on CollectorDives.net or Knives Shipped Free or Northwest Knives that any of them had any in the pipeline. So I called GEC, talked to Christine or Chris, uh, their customer service representative, and said where can I get one and she said well you probably should email Charlie directly because we don't know where he's sending them until he makes those arrangements and he hasn't told us 
So I did email Charlie and he promptly got back to me, told me that uh, Mike Latham at CollectorKnives.net had just procured some. And uh, then I jumped over to CollectorKnives.net, got on his reserve list because they had just shown up available to be reserved. And a few days later, they hit. I got my notification and I clicked buy. <laughs> now, as you may notice, this is not a spear point. And if there was one aspect of George's knife, not that it made it bad, but it just wasn't my cup of tea, it was the spear point blade. And Randy Johnson of Johnson Knives and Solo's Knife Reviews on YouTube had made a request to his viewers a few months ago that he wanted a Tom's Choice Barlow clip point and lo and behold somebody came through for him and he did a video of it and when I saw it I was in love and, you know you guys might be able to tell I haven't really mentioned this I don't think on the channel but uh, you know one of my most beloved knives of my life is the Buck 110 you know how much I love the Buck 119 Special you know how much I love the Cold Steel Recon 1 the Chris Reeve Sabenza 21 what do they have in common yep you got it clip point blades I just love the clip and I really love it in a small pocket knife and here's why lots of belly for slicing but without a round tip if you need to do really fine work digging splinters even opening mail, you have a very acute tip, but you've still got a robust spine and belly for slicing. Not like a Warncliffe. It's kind of a best of both worlds knives, isn't it? Slices like a spear or a drop point, pierces like a Warncliffe but you don't have to beat the tip to death like you do on a Warren Clef. I just love the clip blade. I think it is the most versatile blade shape known to man. And doesn't it look beautiful with that Barlow handle? Man. Okay, let's look at some details of Charlie's special factory order. These are Tidiute branded GEC knives. And actually, I'm not quite sure why. You know, generally, the Tidiute line of carbon steel GECs are made to a lesser level of finish than the Northfield Unexcelled. But I've seen special factory orders that say Northfield on them that are, that are this exact combination with grooved or lined or threaded bolsters and satin finished blades. You know, generally, Titty Utes and GEC's lineup are plain bolstered, satin blades. Northfields are lined bolster, mirror polished blade. Not always, but generally. But uh, GEC and Charlie decided to brand the Tom's Choice Barlow's Titty Ute, which is absolutely fine. And as with most SFO Grady Eastern Cutlery products, uh, the details are absolutely perfect on this knife. Let's look at the grind. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous satin finish. We do have laser etching, Tom's Choice, on the blade. See if I can get the light to hit that right for you. Tang stamps. Titty Cutlery, made in USA, and GEC, T-I-W, that's Great Eastern Cutlery, Titusville Ironworks, pattern number 15, main blade clip, that's the number one after the five, we have one blade, that's the next one, and 14 is the year of production, and these are fresh from the factory. I don't know that you can get these, they've been out for about a week. They might have all disappeared already. They usually do. As with most Great Eastern Cutlery products, we have a full flat grind, a perfectly executed sharpening notch, and a delightfully thin 
grind. Probably around 12 thousandths behind the edge. I gotta stop wiping. Uh, <laughs> let's read the tube, shall we? Divert our attention for a moment from the thing of beauty. And let's see what we've got. The adventure continues. Mark Twain has gone wherever beloved writers go when they cash them in, but his stories live on, giving youngsters adventures to yearn for. Are those stories enough <laughs> to forestall a complete conversion to adventure by silicon chip? Can the woods and rivers that grace our planet provide the inspiration to understand this life? Can the creative writing that brought us Tom and friends, however fantastic, keep things real for our children? I, for one, was fascinated by Tom's machinations. Regardless of consequences, he acted on his conscience, and he was brave. He took the fall and whipping for the girl he had a crush on when she damaged a valuable book. We can provide the tools for the next generation. We can give them a break from the continuous feed of worldly propaganda so they can actually contemplate it a bit. We can help them put aside their smartphones for a little while and experience the thoughtfulness that has wrought all the greatness of this planet. Their own thoughts. Imagine that. Give them books and teach them how to read with contemplation. Give them knives and teach them how to use them safely and creatively. Even if you just make a pile of shavings, your thoughts are your own when you whittle a stick. Not some search engines or anyone else's. They did it their way. Frank Sinatra, Mark Twain, and Tom, too. Charlie Campagna. Charlie can write, too. <laughs> okay. What a great chunk of prose that is, huh? And what a fitting knife to embody that thought and that sentiment. Let's see how she operates, shall we? We've got a nice proud spine with, you know, if your hands are dry enough, pinchable. I think that's why Mr. Johnson likes this knife. Randy is big into pinch opening traditionals. The pull weight on the Tom's Choice Barlow, about a 7 out of 10, I would say. Half stop, back spring and blade and frame meet beautifully. When the knife is open, the back spring is flush. At half stop, it's just a tick proud. And closed, we are back to flush. How's our blade centering? Well, I'd say that's pretty good for a traditional not quite perfect but pretty good how's our walk and talk well you tell me guys perfect absolutely perfect how's our fit and finish well it's really good can feel just a hint of the corners of the bolsters where they meet the walnut on the uh, underside of the handle, but not, not atrocious. Rivets are perfect. Look at that walnut. What beautiful grain these two pieces of wood have. These covers are just gorgeous, aren't they? How are we doing at the butt? Everything's nice and flush. No gaps between liners and springs and covers. Just what you expect. Should we take some measurements? I think we should. I think the knife on camera maybe appears larger than it really is. And frankly, it handles larger than it really is. But let's see what we got here. You guys can never see my tape measure. My light just isn't right. Okay. Blade length is just about exactly two and three quarters. Handle length is three and a half. What does that give us? Six and a quarter overall length. And that Ricasso makes such a nice little finger choil. 
it's easy to come up forward on the knife, almost get the pinky on the back, but if you're you know, not quite fully forward, your pinky kind of dangles. It is really a knife meant to be gripped in this position though, and it's plenty secure in the saber grip. The, in, in sort of that draw cut whittling position, it's beautiful. And if you're push cut whittling, you're gonna pretty much saber grip the knife. There's just not a lot of it there for a hammer grip. It's a small knife. And then, you know, if you're gonna come forward with pinch cuts, it's very capable of doing that, very comfortable. That sort of sleeve board-ish Barlow pattern leaves the biggest part of the handle back in the back of your hand for support and then you've got such great control with this small area in the front of the bolster. Just awesome. How do I carry it? Well some of you guys know I carry almost all of my slip joints in pocket slips. My bigger ones I use that great, or I'm sorry, the knife ship free Main Street slip and then my smaller ones I carry in the small Chris Reeve slip. Think twice, cut once. This came with my Omnundi, and I carry my 92 Talon and my Tom's Choice Barlow in it as well. Fits just perfectly. Plenty knife is plenty buried in there. It doesn't quite have that springy snap that the uh, Knife Ship Free Main Street slip has. If you hold it upside down, the knife will fall out but not a big deal. It just keeps it looking nice in your pocket. You know, I've, lately I've, my traditionals have been kicking my Victorinox Cadet out of my pocket. So I'll carry a modern EDC folder like Benchmade 940, Spider Cup Air Military 2, Chris Reeves, Small Sabenza, and Singo. And then one of my traditionals, or my Cadet. So the my traditional or the Cadet will go in pocket my more expensive traditional is always in a slip. The cadet rides naked. But what a great little pocket knife. Now as usual, blade wipe, as usual, I cannot leave these traditionals in their edge ready factory state. I've got to sharpen them. And just a reminder of what kind of an edge GEC's 1095 is capable of taking. Oops. Masterfully heat treated by Brad and the boys at Peter's Heat Treat. Just awesome. The thing cuts with absolute, absolutely no effort whatsoever. As most Great Eastern Cutlery products do. But you know, I've talked a lot about uh, specifics and characteristics and dimensions finicky little details but none of those things really convey what makes a Tom's Choice Barlow so doggone special. Um, to understand that you've got to look at it. I mean every line, every proportion is so perfectly pocket knife. Look at the shape of that clip point blade. I don't know that you can do that any better or any more classically than it's done on this knife. And that large Barlow bolster just pops off the handle in its high polished nickel silver with that bold TC Tom's Choice logo. You know, for a small knife, this thing, it just, it, it just dominates a room. <laughs> If you had a party of pocket knives and it was full of other GECs and cases and hen and roosters and the clip point Tom's Choice Barlow walked in, everybody would stop what they're talking about and take notice. <laughs> I waited and waited for the next round of these to be produced and I could not believe I got one. Isn't it gorgeous? Keep your eyes peeled, guys. Stay in touch with the uh, 
Great Eastern Cutlery website on the right side sidebar on their home page. They tell you when this stuff's getting ready to happen. So if you want one, you got to pay attention because they don't they don't sit on the shelves very long on our online retailers and when they're gone they rarely get sold or traded and for good reason thought you'd like to see that one tonight guys that's all for now grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ and remember the word and my tom's choice barlow are sharp <laughs>